I couldn't ever really be whole. I was always just parts. Parts of me that I had to pack away and not show to anybody. I am a stranger. A ghost they can't quite see. I am neither. I matter. Probably what I hear most from students about, you know, the messages they receive from family, from friends, from media. They don't know what their future will be like or if they will even have a future. We can feel really detached from family and from history and tradition as queer people, but there's so much of that that we do in the Pride Resource Center and so much in our queer history and heritage that we want to make sure students feel a part of that too. This year in 2023, we're celebrating 25 years of Pride. GLBT Student Services opened August 1st, 1998. Looking ahead to the next 25 years of Pride, I think our mission is really to think about this word thriving. And thriving to me means holistic wellness. They're happy, they're whole, they're celebrated, their mental health is good, their grades are good, they have plans after graduation. Getting their job, creating the family they want, a trans elder one day, those things are all real possibilities for them. What was happening nationally in the 90s, we were kind of reconciling and coming out of the HIV and AIDS ap epidemic. And so there's a lot more visibility um, and destigmatization of LGBTQ folks. And so in the 90s is when this big other wave of colleges opening LGBTQ centers. The Student Organization for Gays, Lesbians, and Bisexuals, or SOGLIB, worked with ASCSU, or the Associated Students of CSU, um, to advocate uh, with the Vice President for Student Affairs and others on campus to organize, raise funds to open GLBT Student Services. So that all occurred really in 1997 to have us open in 1998. And when we had our physical location open, uh, Matthew Shepard was murdered in an anti-gay hate crime. And so Matthew was a student at the University of Wyoming in Laramie, but died here in Fort Collins. Because uh, around that murder, there were also some bias incidents happening on campus here at CSU in Fort Collins. There was a lot of pride, too, around CSU being one of the earlier schools to open an LGBTQ center, despite all the things happening around the nation at the time. There was actually no physical location. It was just a half-time person who worked in residential life, Lisa Phelps, who was our first director, was only a part-time director. And it was later until November of that same year that we physically opened with the location. Randy McCrillis, he was the first direct, full-time director of the uh, Pride Center. Randy had some really interesting plans. He wanted to grow it. And part of it was he wanted to ignite the alumni base. And so I said, yes, i will um, love to. Let's, get him, let's do it and let's get involved. And the alumni, we had a purpose. Let's raise money for um, the office and the center. And so we got a few of us got together and alumni, and we started kind of engaging with Randy and raising money here down in Denver. My first experience with coming out was fall of 1980, uh, November 1980, election year. Then you, it was, you had to call, leave your name and number on a recording. They contacted you and they told you where to meet someone and that person would take you to the meetings. But there was community, it just wasn't on campus formalized. The first center was really literally just a, a, a office cubicle downstairs, but after the flood, you go upstairs and there's a space. It's not a cubicle with a desk and a chair. I think that's what struck us more than anything else. The universe was putting it front face and not hiding it. So our first location was in the basement of the Lori Student Center prior to some of the renovations that have happened. We didn't move until uh, to this like main floor of the Lori Student Center until 2002, um, which is when a lot of our programs and services really expanded.
I, I definitely had a lot of internalized homophobia that I had learned throughout the years that kept me from really claiming my queerness. I had no real love for myself at the time. I was so invested in trying to make people like me that I really had no concept of how to be true to myself um, and explore myself and my identity. And yeah, in this picture, I was 15. I had been severely depressed. They knew nothing about who they were or what mattered to them or what was in store um, in the future. And I just, I love them so much and I didn't love myself when I, when I was there, you know? So I've come a long way. <laughs> yeah, the first time I went to school at CSU was um, in 2004 and I felt so alone and so lost. I didn't really have a sense of community anywhere. I was so scared to get involved with any kind of clubs or, you know, anything that, that would have helped me meet people and feel a sense of belonging. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had really no sense of direction. And as a result, I ended up dropping out. And then when 2020 hit and the pandemic started and then all the things started happening with racial justice, um, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and horrible things were happening and I suddenly just sort of realized that I couldn't not focus my life on something that mattered. And that sort of led to the realization that I wanted to go back to school, which was scary um, as a 30-something. I graduated from CSU uh, December 2019. I grew up in Hawaii, so I came out here to Fort Collins partially because the mountains are right here and I love the outdoors. The Pride Resource Center and the SDPS offices were really fundamental to a sense of belonging and place um, for for me as a student I definitely it felt very much like our pain was valid and something communal and not something to be suppressed or erased and they're like community and I'm like oh I gotta talk to this person <laughs> like like <laughs> The role of the Pride Center within the university space is I think it provides a place of community where one can be themselves without having to constantly hide that from the others. You can interact with people who are similar to yourself and see their experiences and how they might, might be similar to yourself. I came to college very confused with my gender identity. I have been suffering from a lot of distress from it. And I had never had this supportive open space where I could feel free to be myself. I started the year really apprehensive of whether or not I really wanted to continue college. There have been a lot of really tough times that I've gone through over the last year. The Pride Research Center has just honestly helped me stay at CSU. So in 2020, we got information and data about how our LGBTQ students do mental health and belonging on campus. And so our colleagues um, on campus were able to advocate for more funding for us to have three full-time professional staff. We're actually one of few LGBTQ centers in the country that's on a college campus that has more than two full-time professional staff, which is really exciting. Over the last few years, we've been able to really expand what thriving looks like for our students. And I've seen the activity of our students, their willingness to get involved and be leaders and create their own programs has really grown too. We have students on our Pride Leadership Council who are making really awesome change on campus, adding all gender restrooms, expanding all gender housing, creating our lavender cabinet, which is free resources to students. 
somebody. We have groups like CSU House of Ovis, uh, which is our drag house on campus. What we're doing tonight, the drag show is one of uh, CSU's longest running student run programs. It's also one of the largest CSU student run programs, and it's historically been the largest drag show in the state of Colorado. Um, so, really big pieces of our collective queer history comes from drag culture, ballroom culture, um, how black trans women and other folks have gathered and created um, avenues for chosen family, but also self-expression. So to see our students really honoring that legacy by creating their own drag house, for example, hosting the state's largest drag show. The students are really trying to um, latch on to what is that legacy around self-expression, what does joy look like to just be show up as your authentic self and be playful with gender and identity, um, being able to explore things that you might not feel comfortable with in everyday life. When we plan events for the Pride Center, um, one of the biggest things we want to center is uh, both queer joy and intersectionality. So making sure that our events um, are for everybody um, in the LGBTQ plus community, whether they hold the same identities as me or not. We want to make sure that no matter what um, is happening in the outside world when we put on events, that they're not only educational, but supportive and um, centering joy. Um, there's Queer Prom. It's really an opportunity for people who didn't get a chance to go to prom with a partner that they really love. I love that. <laughs> Wear something that they felt really good in and have a second shot at going to something like that where they can just be who they are and feel really good in their own skin and with their partner. <laughs> we have Lavender Graduation, which is our graduation ceremony for LGBTQ plus students. Um, they get a special ribbon, like a cord, and it's just sort of a way of honoring the legacy of queer and trans students who maybe weren't able to be true to themselves when they graduated here, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. I've got a couple examples here. Um, erasure poetry looks like this usually, um, a body of writing that some words have been crossed out. So instead of creating words like and writing a poem, you're, it's, it's more of a form of found poetry. Um, so the first step for this um, is going to be to write down a list of things that you've heard. And this is an example. Um, so this is one that I did, you know, messages that I've received throughout my life, and I turned it into a poem to reframe it. So I'll let you read through that. I was always just parts. Different parts that I showed to different people. Finally, not having to do that has been one of the most freeing things I've ever experienced. It's really important to do what we can to take care of ourselves and to reclaim our own power. Our theme for this year, and as we're celebrating 25 years of Pride, is a quote by Raquel Willis, who is a trans activist. Raquel has said, queerness is rooted in abundance. And that's, I think, a perfect summary of what the future can look like. Want it to be abundant and in full in a, in a garden that is overflowing with, with flowers and possibility and futures. If your fraternity brother gets engaged, you do a big old thing on the plaza. You celebrate it, you know. There's always this way that they, the mainstream community does it. But when we do it, it's reduced down to sex. Less about celebrating our lives in a very different way. We have it because we weren't allowed to have it before. And now that we have it, we're going to define it the way we want to. You know, Gen Z, they know how to take care of each other. And I've really seen that a lot in the Pride Center. 
It's been so inspiring, and in a way, it's been healing for that younger part of myself that never really received that. It's changed my whole life. It really has. One, two, three, four.